Let's talk about how to create a simple presentation and show it using screen share in Zoom. I use Keynote, which is a program designed by Apple, but Keynote and PowerPoint are very much alike. So if you're on a PC, your option might be PowerPoint, but the basic steps are going to be the same. The first step is to choose a presentation format. When I open Keynote, <clears throat> this is the first page I see. So I can choose the theme here. The way to choose the presentation style is to click on the one that you like so that it gets outlined, as you see here, with the blue box. Once you have selected the presentation style that you'd like to use, then you can click on the Create tab to open the next screen. I think it's a good idea to keep it simple. Don't choose anything fancy. White or black is fine for showing images of your work. All of the other presentations are a little bit fancier and really overkill for what we need here. This is the screen that will come up. Now, I'm planning and I'm encouraging you just to put photos in your presentation or possibly the title of a piece but in general, you're not going to use a lot of text boxes. So you don't really want this screen and some people don't understand how to get rid of these boxes that you see here as the setups. But if you go over to where the slides are listed and you click on that box, you'll get a layout assortment. Now, if I was doing a really complicated newsletter sort of presentation, these would be useful to me. But for what we're doing right now, all we really need is a simple white box. So click on that block or that box, and that's what will open on the next screen, and that will become your default. <clears throat> so your screen will look like this. If you highlight the box so that it has the blue edge, then you can copy it on your keyboard. On a Mac, copy is Command-C, and Command-V is the key that you hit or the combination that you hit to paste more boxes into your or screens into your presentation. You can keep adding as many boxes as you need, and if you need more, once you've got all of your images in boxes, you can add additional boxes then. This will be a little bit different based on what kind of a computer you're using, but if you're not quite sure how it works in PowerPoint, you can use their little box that answers questions in order to figure out how to copy and paste additional boxes or screens or pages into your document. So the third step is to add the pictures. You've got your presentation set up here. I've got the boxes on the left-hand side, and I've got the box, the big screen. So before you get started pulling your images into your presentation, put them on your desktop. I take all the pictures that I'm planning to use out of my picture file or wherever I store them. Everybody's a little bit different there, but it's much easier to put them in your presentation if you've got them on your desktop. Once your pictures are on the desktop in the way that you saw there on my last screen, you can drag the boxes one at a time onto the big page as you see it done here. So you're not pulling the images over onto the little thumbnails on the left. The image that you pull is going to go onto whatever screen you're seeing in the large format right there on the computer. You can drag an image onto the screen to that slide and then you can advance to the next blank slide and add an image there, and then advance to the next blank slide. And that's how you'll fill all the slides into the presentation. <clears throat> if you look at the left-hand side and you wish that the slide that's in the number four position was actually first, you can literally click on that slide number four and drag it up to the top to reposition the slides. And as I just said, you can keep dragging pictures onto slides 
and you'll see them in the thumbnails on the left, and then you'll also see them uh, on the large screen. Now, a really handy feature in both PowerPoint and Keynote is that there is an automatic default and it's yellow lines that show up like this to let you know when a picture is centered in the box. When you move the picture back and forth, this is a still slide, so I can't do it. But if I clicked on the picture of the flowers, I could move it back and forth and I would see these yellow lines pop up when the picture was centered. You have to look carefully because they do disappear. So pay attention to them when you see them. Once you've got your pictures in your presentation, then you can name them and you can do that later so that you keep these jobs organized and get everything done. So I would get all my pictures in, in order first, and then I would go back and add the names and also give the presentation a title. You wanna give the presentation a title or name it in order to save it. So that's step four. If you click up on the top line, at the top of the screen where it says untitled, a box will drop down and then you can type the name of your presentation into that name box. And then you see the other drop down menu will indicate where the presentation is going to be saved. So right now there's a check mark next to Keynote in iCloud and that means that's where the presentation is going to be saved. But in reality, if I wanna share it through a screen share, it would probably be better if I save it on my desktop. So that's what I would do. I would scroll down to desktop and click on that. And when I do, I'll get a little check mark next to the desktop icon, and that'll be an indication that my presentation is saved there. Step five is to add the name of the piece and any details you want to include. So first you click on the text tab and a text box will spontaneously appear on your screen. And most of the time it appears somewhere in the middle of the screen. Now you, you can drag that box around and position it anywhere you want. And if you click on the box itself on the text inside, it will erase and you can add your own description. And you might have to play around with that a little bit, but it's pretty straightforward. Now I've retitled this piece, or I've titled it, The Prostitute, and I have dragged the box down to the bottom to the left-hand side of the artwork. In general, it's a good idea to keep the size of the font consistent and also the placement of the text. So now your slides are set up in the presentation and you've saved it. So you're ready to share it with screen share. And so let's see how to do that next. Before you go into a Zoom meeting where you intend to share your slides, open the presentation on the desktop. Do this again before you begin the Zoom meeting so that it's waiting in the background and it's ready to go. And make sure it's set on the first slide because it will open to whatever slide you left highlighted. So you wanna be sure always to take it back to the first slide and you wanna leave it open on your screen. Once the meeting or the discussion begins, the host allows screen sharing by clicking on the green button, and that will invite you to share, or you'll have the capability to share. The host has to, the host must activate the screen share before anyone who's in the, the meeting can actually use it. The box that will pop up will look like this. There will be either the op, option of one participant sharing at a time or multiple participants can share simultaneously. That'll be up to the host to choose, but most of the time it'll be selected so that when it's your turn, you can open screen share by clicking on the green button. When you click on screen share, this will come up. It'll say 
you'll you'll see the things that are on your desktop and you'll see the button down on the right or the tab that says share and you want to use your cursor or your mouse to highlight whatever it is you're planning to share so in this case there's my cursor i want to share this keynote presentation called my archetypes so i make sure that when i click on it it's inside the blue box so that i make the right choice if i had highlighted what's above there, you see desktop one. If I'd highlighted that, when I open screen share, that would pop up and that wouldn't be right because I wouldn't be able to get to my presentation. So make sure you've got this box, your presentation highlighted in blue and then click share. Once you have started to share the presentation, you'll see it has a green box. On your screen somewhere, based on what device you're using, which is why it's a good idea to do this in advance and audition it so that you know where all the important buttons or tabs are located. I have a button in the Keynote program that says Play, and I'm gonna click on that because it will enlarge it to full screen. And so that's what's happened now. It's been enlarged. Now, if you look to the top right, you'll see that you can still see me in the thumbnail. Some people don't want to be seen while they're talking. And theoretically, you see the little flat line here? You could click on that and it would take this image away and you would have full screen without any images here. But if you leave it open, when other people are on the presentation with you, you will see several of them in, key, in, in thumbnails along the side here as well. And that's not a bad thing to leave in place because if someone has a question, you can figure out that they've got a question more easily when this right-hand side is open than you would if you had diminished it or flattened it out. So once you've got this screen open, it's a fairly straightforward process you share the slides by using the arrow key on your keyboard or by using the mouse to advance the slides. And one advantage is that you can go backwards and forward to visit pictures that you've already shown if a question comes up and someone in the discussion wants to go back and look at some of the other work that you've already shared with them. When your presentation is complete, you can click on stop share and that'll be up at the top, usually on the left hand corner. It could be on the bottom corner. Take some getting used to because some of that is related to your device. But if you click on stop share, it will return you to the group and it will end the share. And it's important to know how to do that and to understand how that works because otherwise you could be stuck with your presentation open and not know how to get out of it. And that could be problematic. So you've done it. Now that you've learned to build a simple presentation and share it, you can share any pictures you have. You can share your artwork. You can share family pictures on a family Zoom call. There are all kinds of things you can do with these very basic steps. You can have some fun with this and you can be open to learning more as you go along because the tools are robust and you can personalize your presentations and make them fun by adding all kinds of animations, which takes a while to learn, but it's really fun. You can change the fonts, you can change the colors. There are lots of things that you can do once you've gotten the basic skill that I've just explained to you here under your belt. So practice a little bit putting a presentation together and then practice doing um, a test run on Zoom. Whether you've got a, an, if you have an account, a free account, you can still test run how to do the screen sharing. Otherwise you might get with a friend and just practice back and forth until you feel really comfortable with it. And I hope it's been worth your time to learn how to use this important skill.